an umbrella at the time I placed it here. So I took it out of this container here. I flipped it over, gonna put it over my head, and lo and behold, it was a snake. Grow, eco neighbor. Grow, 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 eco neighbor. Grow, 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 eco neighbor. Grow, 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 eco neighbor. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Grow, buddy. Let's grow together. All right. Let's jump into this video. You ready? You ready? You ready to jump into this video? Let's jump into this video. Tell the people, let's go. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. Oh, no. Attack my shaka. <laughs> let's grow. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, fam. Today, I want to talk to you about diatomaceous earth, but the type that I use, it also has bentonite clay with it, too, as well. It's not necessarily to promote the brand, but it's just to talk about the benefits about utilizing it on the homestead. I feel like it's a must have on the homestead, especially when you're trying to stay away from pesticides, when you're trying to stay away from things that may not only harm your fruits and your vegetables, but as well as your livestock. It's pet friendly, livestock friendly, and environmental friendly. So I think it's a great addition and I just want to share with you some things that I feel like that will be beneficial to you and your homestead. So consider taking a look, do your research, and take a look at uh, bentonite clay mixed with diatomaceous earth. The weather is cooling down and I'm grateful. Shaka eating his herbs and vegetables, doing his morning routine. And I gotta tackle this mess. This will not happen overnight, but some of this stuff has been here since I got here. Um, the well was my first shelter and it's so much stuff. And I'm telling you all, the more you collect over the years, the harder it is to just keep it, you know? It's just, I don't know why we do like hoarding stuff, but this umbrella right here, it was placed here. It was a great umbrella at the time I placed it here, along with all this other jumbled, jumbled up stuff, but it has value, don't get it twisted. So I took it out of this container here. I flipped it over, gonna put it over my head and lo and behold, it was a snake in this umbrella, nestled in the top. Of course, um, that was yesterday. I took care of business. I kind of sent them to the upper room, took care of that snake. And I went to come back in here to do some work on this mess. And y'all don't judge me. This is my mess. And it is what it is. But then I looked up and you, know, you can't see it now. But Lord knows I see it. Bam. That's what we got right here going on right now. And um, I'm getting quiet. Because I got to get rid of it. And I got more chores to do on the homestead. So, yeah. It's never a boring day. There's no telling what else I'm going to encounter as I do this. This is why it's so important that I take care of some of this stuff. It's starting to get cool. The cooler mornings, the cooler days. Animals have to find a nice, warm environment to stay in overnight and then sit out in the sun. So this is to be expected. But yeah. Nevertheless, let's get on with Ben tonight, Clay, too. I sprayed it in the chicken coop as well as uh, actually add it to their feed too as well. It helps not only with their overall health, it also helps um, to help get rid of pests and bugs and parasites and a lot of other things too as well. I love to use it with Shaka, the dog pen, the area it controls. Fleas and ticks. I spread it in the area, spread it in this pen. 
a lot of his resting places that he likes to sit, likes to kind of dig up, and likes to go down, I spread it through there too as well. And you know, bentonite clay, it also conditions the soil. I use it in some of my flower beds, my raised beds, my container beds, especially when I don't buy that store-bought soil and I need to condition my soil. I need to add a little texture. We got a lot of sand mix in our soil and I have to go in different areas of the land to get some other uh, types of soil. And then so I mix some bentonite clay to condition the soil as well. And bentonite clay and the diatomaceous earth blend for skin, teeth, for cleaning, for scrubbing, a lot of other things. And what I would do is with that big old bag, I'm going to turn you around. I would spread it out throughout the yard too as well. Just kind of spread it out here. And not only will it be good for the grass or what have you, but it also will help me with some of the natural pest deterrent too as well. The fleas and the ticks and all of the roaches. Some people don't think about it. They call them water bugs out here. In the project, we call them roaches. But it helps with the roaches too as well because some people think you're out in the country, you might not have roaches. Man, please. <laughs> Something about... Uh, out here in the country, you do have roaches, them little flying roaches. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or as the high-end people say, water bugs. You know those water bugs. It's the difference. All right, this is what I'm shooting with. This is what I'm on with, this spectricide, wasp, and hunted, hornet killer. All right, I shook it up. We got them right here. Let's see if we can get a zoom in. Low light action right here. Not the best lighting. Let's see what we got. One hand action. All right, here we go. Three. Let's see, five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Die. <laughs> Die. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we good, we good, we good. Yeah. Now I'm finna walk off. And I'm finna get out of the way. Yeah. They drop it. Fam, I appreciate y'all hanging out with us for a few minutes on the homestead. And we hope that the things that we shared was beneficial to you. Until the next time, don't forget to keep on growing. Grow.